Welcome! Today we're going to learn how to tune your instrument in just a few easy steps. Now, as a professional concert violinist who also plays viola, I can attest to the point that this method definitely works for both instruments. So go grab your instrument and let's get started. All right, so first things first, we're gonna determine which strings are which. Now, if you have a violin and you're looking at it and you're facing it, so I'm gonna face it towards this way, from the left to the right, this is the G string, which is the lowest string, followed by the D, and then the A, and then the E. Now, if you're looking at your viola, this is gonna be the C string, and then the G, and then the D, and then the A. So when we start tuning, we always start with the A string because the A string is the highest string that all string instruments share in common. And higher sounds means that it travels easier over distance into the ear. So since this video is for those who are just starting out, you will need fine tuners on all four strings. So you can see here that I have this instrument, a beginner violin, that has fine tuners on all of them. If you don't have it for whatever reason, be sure to get them installed. Otherwise, you risk snapping, trying to tune your own strings with the pegs. It's all all bad. All right, so first of all, we're gonna run through the two ways that you can approach tuning, and then we'll get into the actual pitch adjustment later. The first method is pretty simple. You can tune to a tuner like an app or a metronome that has a dial that will tell you visually whether you're sharp or flat. The usual A is uh, tuned to 440 or to 442 hertz. This is just typical for an A, and it sounds like around here. The second method is actually tuning through to a pitch. Tuning to a pitch is more difficult. However, it's an important skill to develop as a musician. It's actually where you start having to train your ears to determine which pitch is higher or lower. And it does take some time to develop and practice. And speaking of practice, I wanted to share with you this app that I've been working on over the past few years that helps people enjoy practicing more. Now, as a beginner, you probably have a ton of questions about how to get things right, which makes sense because a lot could go wrong, like a string snapping in your face or your bridge falling down. And over the years, as I've been learning, I found it so incredibly helpful when I could ask questions to those who have more experience than me. And on Tonic, there are so many communities and groups that you can join for free where you could actually get get the answers you have to your questions, like which strings to use or what piece to play next. You could even open a practice room with your friends and practice tuning together. So like I said, definitely give it a try. It's completely free and you can follow this link in the description below to download it or scan this QR code on the screen right now. Okay, so back to tuning to a reference pitch. You could tune to a piano, you could tune to a tuning fork, or you could tune to this video that I just happened to make right now of me playing just open strings perfectly in tune, I might add. But for today, I'm gonna play a note that I've got on my computer. This is set to A441. We're gonna have a little challenge for those of you to test how good your hearing is. So I'm gonna first play the pitch and then I'm gonna play the A string on my violin. And you're gonna tell me which one is higher. So let's get started. Here's the pitch. Here's me. We'll do it together once. All right, so which one is higher? For those of you who said that the violin was higher, congratulations, you failed, and you definitely have to watch the next part of the video. And for those of you who did get it right, you can feel free to stick around, or you can skip straight to the part where we talk about sound wave tuning. All right, so for those of you who are still with me, let's figure out how to tell which pitch is higher. The easy way to do it is to actually sing it. If your vocal cords are in good shape, you should be able to match the pitch that we just heard. Now, don't be shy, let's do this together. There we have it. Now we're gonna match this one. The pitch that you strain less with is the one that's lower. That's the general rule of thumb. If it's really, really close, congratulations, it means that you're getting closer to the note. But in our case, we're still pretty far. So what we need to do is start turning the fine tuners clockwise if your instrument is lower, anti-clockwise if your instrument is higher. So in our case, we're gonna turn it clockwise half a turn. We're gonna test it again. So that's still off, we're gonna do it again and maybe a full turn this time. Kind of getting closer, and then you keep doing it until you're really unable to distinguish between the two notes. All right, so at this point, I've actually turned it a couple of turns by now, and I'm starting to be unable to distinguish the sound and the pitch, which one's higher. So this is when we start to use the sound wave method. And now is the time when we start training our ears. We start to play at the same time while listening to the pitch. And what you're gonna be looking for and listening for is an oscillating sound, kind of like a ya 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 ya, like that. And the general rule is the faster the oscillation, the further away from the pitch you are. So the goal is to slow down the oscillations until it flatlines. That's when you can tell you're perfectly in tune. All right, so let's get started. 
Do you hear that? Where it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's about that fast. Since we were going from the direction where our instrument was lower, and obviously if it's higher, you do the opposite thing. We're gonna turn it still in the same direction that we did, which is clockwise, a little bit more, maybe like a quarter of a turn. And then we're gonna try again. You'll notice that the oscillations have slowed down. Before it was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And now it's like, yeah, 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 like that. That's great. That means that we're getting really close to the pitch. So we're gonna turn it even a little bit more. So it's still kind of oscillating. We're gonna turn it a bit more as well, but you can start to hear that the oscillations have slowed down. And that's a great thing. For a general rule, I like to go slightly over to make sure that my instrument is slightly higher. It's better to be slightly sharper than it is to be slightly flat. Now, I know a lot of my colleagues might disagree with this, but when it comes to tuning, it really helps. We can turn it a little bit more. I would say that that's pretty close, and I think that we're there, so, which is great. And now that we've tuned the A string, you can apply the same method, either tuning with a dial or tuning against the pitch like we just did with the other strings. And once you've perfected that and you feel more confident where you've trained your ear to the point where you know which string is higher and lower, then you can start and try to tune against the other strings, which is tuning against the fifths. <laughs> And the same method applies where you can hear that oscillating wave and you want to get that wave down to minimum as possible. And that's when you know you're perfectly in tune. And that's it for basic tuning. Let me know in the comments if that was helpful or if there were things that you still don't understand. And if you'd like to check out if you're making common mistakes, go watch this other video I made where I go into detail about the top 10 mistakes violins make on a daily basis. And I'll definitely be making a follow-up video where we go into more advanced tuning methods that do involve pegs. But that's it for now. So go practice on tonic and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.